Welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Rainer and this is Rainier Books. In a couple of weeks, millions and not billions of people on earth celebrate Christmas and we are all looking for beautiful presents for our friends, for our loved ones, aren't we? And a lot of us give books and receive books. And uh, in, on my channel, I give you a little advice, a little help for your picks for Christmas. Today I present you 10 crime novels that you could give as a present for Christmas for your loved ones. Let's get started. I think this is a very diverse selection that I present you today. I'm really confident about this. 10 crime novels that were published, all published in 2020 in the English language, some of them translated, some not. And this is um, Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. S.A. Cosby is an Afro-American crime writer who has been reviewed very, very fairly over the last couple of years. He's gotten raving, beautiful reviews. And his new book, uh, Black Tub Wasteland was published on the 14th of July by Flat Iron Books. And this is about a guy called Buck Montage. He's a l loving husband. He's a father. He was one of the toughest getaway drivers in the American Southeast in the states of Florida and along the East Coast. But he has retired as a, as a getaway driver. But then somebody comes from his past and he invites him to come with him to do this final last heist to make a lot of money and to also be uh, able to sort of uh, forget about the things that happened to his father. As a Cosby's Blacktop Wasteland is a thrilling crime novel. The second book that I would recommend to you is uh, also this by an Afro-American, but half Afro-American, half Ghanaian writer. This is by K, by Quay Gorty, and this is The Missing American, published by Soho Crime on the 14th of January in 2020. And here we have a private investigator, a PI, Emma John, from not Los Angeles, and not New York, but Accra in Ghana. She is on a missing person's case that leads her into the darkest depths of the email scams and fetish priests in Ghana, the world's internet capital. When her dreams of rising through the Accra police ranks like her father crashes around her, 26-year-old Emma is unsure what will So she works for a private eye, for a private investigator then, and takes on a case of a missing person through the support group. And this is a story that uh, leads us not only to through the through the um, Ghanaian capital Accra, but also to the United States. The author Quay Corti is uh, an American African, an African, a Ghanaian Afro-American author who has been a surgeon for 20. I think the missing American is his fifth or sixth novel already. The great Scottish author Ian Rankin has published his 23rd novel about the Edinburgh inspector John Rebus, the 23rd novel, and this is called um, A Song for the Dark Times, published by Orion on the 1st of October in 2020. For the 23rd time, we meet John Rebus, who is retired now, as you might know. When his daughter Samantha calls in in the dead of night, John Rebus knows it's not good news. Her husband has been missing for two days. Rebus fears the worst and knows from his lifetime and the police that his daughter will be the prime suspect. He wasn't the best father. He would always police work above being a father. The job always come first, but now his daughter needs him more than ever. But is he going to be a father or is he going to be a detective? As he leaves at dawn to drive out the windswept coast and a small town with big secrets, he wonders whether this might be the first time in his life where the truth is the one thing he does not want to find. A Song for the Dark Times by Ian Rankings. Always great entertainment reading the novels of Ian Rankings. Oh, very safe bet. 
to uh, read Michael Connolly. He's one of my favorite crime authors, and he is there. He is published just published a couple of days ago, on the 10th of November, his newest, his sixth novel with the um, with the uh, attorney Mickey Haller. It's called The Law of Innocence, published by Little Brown and Company on the 10th of November. Mickey Haller is the Lincoln lawyer, and you might see the, that was the first novel with Mickey Haller as uh, the main, the protagonist for Michael Connolly, and this is number six. The Lincoln Lawyer is also a movie which you might have seen by, which you might have seen with Matthew McConey. On the night he celebrates a big win, defense attorney Mickey Haller is pulled over by police who find the body of a former client in the trunk of his beautiful Lincoln. Haller is immediately charged with murder, but can post the exorbitant $5 million bail slapped on him by a vindictive judge. Mickey elects to represent himself and is forced to mount his defense from his jail cell in the Twin Towers Correctional Center in Los Angeles. All the while, he needs to look over his shoulder. As an officer of the court, he's an instant target and he makes few friends when he reveals a corruption plot within the jail. But the bigger plot is the one against him. Haller knows that he's been framed, whether by a new enemy or an old one. As his trusted team, including his half-brother, Harry Bosch, investigates, Haller must use all his skills in the courtroom to counter the damning evidence against him. The Law of Innocence by Michael Connolly. Um, the third of my favorite series authors is Peter Robinson. He is British, but he is also Canadian. He emigrated to Canada a long time ago, but he still writes novels about his... Police, uh, I think he's now the chief superintendent, inspector, whatever, Alan Banks in Eastvale, a uh, made-up fictitious town in England. And this is the 26th novel with Alan Banks that was published by um, William Morrow uh, on the 14th of January in 2020. And this novel is called Many Rivers to Cross. But I can seem to find my way over. You know the song? Many Rivers to Cross is the novel by Peter Robinson. In Eastvale, a young Middle Eastern boy is found dead, his body stuffed into a wheelie bin on the East Side estate. Detective Superintendent, that's what he is now, Detective Superintendent Alan Banks and his team are getting on the case and they must be very sensitive because this is a case where racism might be involved. The victim was stabbed somewhere else and dumped. Who is the boy and where did he come from? In a decayed area of Eastville, scheduled for redevelopment, a heroin addict was found dead a little later on. Was this just another tragic incident, a tragic overdose or something dark? To prevent tensions in Eastvale, and, and the community, Alan Banks must find quick answers to those questions. What has happened here? But uh, as he's, he's approaching the case, he finds himself distracted by a friend of him, an old friend of him who has serious problems. So Banks is dealing with his private life again and with his life as a superintendent. He needs a break and gets one when he finds a connection to a real estate developer who could be the key to finding the truth. With so many loose ends dangling, there is one thing Banks is sure of. Solving the case will come at a terrible cost. Many Rivers to Cross is the 26th novel by Peter Robinson about Alan Banks, and the 27th is already scheduled for 2020. I really recommend uh, Peter Robinson's novels. They are great stuff. Stephen King has blurred one of the earlier works by Robinson as this is the best series you can read on the market right now. It might still be. Uh, the next title I want to recommend is William Boyle's novel, The City of Margins, or City of Margins, that was published on March 3 in 2020 by Pegasus Crime. Uh, in this uh, novel, this one sta standalone novel, several lives in southern Brooklyn are intertwined in the early 1990s. We have Donny Parnscandoli, a disgraced ex-cop with blood on his hands. We have Ava Bufalco, a widow whose daily work grind is her whole life. Nick, Ava's son, is a grubby school, high school teacher who dreams of a shortcut to success. Mickey Baldini, a college dropout who has returned to the old neighborhood purposeless and drifting. We have Donna Rotanti, 
Donnie's ex-wife, still reeling from the suicide of their teenage son. Mickey's mother, Rosemary, also with it, who hopes Mickey won't fall into the trap of strong-arm work. And Antonia Divino, a high school girl with designs on breaking free from Brooklyn. Uniting them are the dad, Mickey's old man killed over a gambling debt, and Donnie and Donna's poor son, Gabe. You see a lot of Italo-American characters uh, mingled together with all different aspects, desires, and fantasies, and backstories. This is a very interesting novel. These characters cross paths in an unexpected way, guided by coincidence and the pull of blood. There are new things to be found in the rubble of their lives too. The promise of something different beyond the barriers that have been set out for them. This is a story of revenge and retribution of facing down the ghosts of the past, of untold desires, of yearning and forgiveness and synchronicity, of the great distance of life's lived and dangerous proximity to each other. City of Margins is a technical or noir melodrama pieced together in broken glass. If this doesn't sound like a combination of The Sopranos and Lana Del Rey, then I don't know. City of Margins by William Boyle. Squeeze me! is the title of the next novel, published on the 25th of August by Knopf in the United States. And the author is, of course, Carl Hyas. And I don't actually know how you pronounce yourself. Carl, Carl Hyas. And you know the guy with H-I-A-A-S-E-M. And it's the height of the Palm Beach charity ball season. For every disease or cause, there's a reason for the local luminaries to eat minimally, drink maximally, and be seen. But when a prominent High society, Doager suddenly vanishes during a swamp gala and is later found dead in a concrete grave. Panic and chaos erupts. Kiki Pugh was notable not just for her wealth and her jewels. She was an ardent fan of the Winter White House resident just down the road and a founding member of the Potussies, a group of women dedicated to supporting their pro Never want to miss an opportunity to play to his base, the president immediately declares that Kiki was the victim of rampaging immigrant hordes. This, it turns out, is far from the truth. The truth might just lie in the middle, where a bizarre discovery brings the first lady's motorcade to a grinding halt, followed by some grinding between the first lady and a love-struck Secret Service agent. Enter Angie Armstrong, wildlife wrangler extraordinary who arrives at her own conclusions after she's summoned to the posh island to deal with a mysterious and impolite influx of huge hungry pythons. Carl Hyacin can brighten even the darkest of days and Squeeze Me is pure unadulterated Hyacin, irreverent, ingenious and highly entertaining. Squeeze Me perfectly captures the absurdity of our times and there are no similarities, they are just arbitrary between this winter president and his first wife, who plays, who play to their base. Carl Hyacinth's novel, Squeeze Me, is something to read over Christmas and something to give away to your loved ones. As you know, I am living in Sweden, in Scandinavia, and we have great uh, crime literature in Scandinavia as well. And my next recommendation for Christmas for a Christmas present for your loved ones, or for yourself maybe, is the great Norwegian author of Jew Nesbø, who has written a standalone novel, not about his inspector Harry Hole, or Harry Hule, as he's called, but uh, this is a standalone novel called The Kingdom that was published by Knopf on the 10th of November in 2020. Uh, I read what the publisher had to say about this book. Roy has never left the quiet mountain town he grew up in, unlike his little brother Carl, who couldn't wait to get out and escape his troubled past. Just like everyone else in town, Roy believed Carl was gone for good. But Carl... But Carl has big plans for his hometown, and when he returns with a mysterious new wife and a business opportunity that seems too good to be true, simmering tensions begin to surface and unexplained deaths in the town's past come under new scrutiny. Soon, powerful players set their sights on taking the brothers down by exposing their role in the town's sordid history. But Roy and Carl are survivors and no strangers to violence. Roy has always protected his younger brother, 
As the body count rises, though, Roy's loyalty to family is tested. And then Roy finds himself inextricably drawn to Carl's wife, Shannon, an attraction that will have devastating consequences. Roy's world is coming apart, and soon there will be no turning back. He'll be forced to choose between his own flesh and blood, and a future he had never dared to believe possible. That is Jew Nesbo's new novel called The Kingdom, that was published last week by Kanaf and might be under your Christmas tree. Let me finish this with two novels from Canada written by women. Uh, we start with The Lost Sister by Andrea Gunrai, published on the 4th of March this year by Nimbus. Alicia and Diana are young sisters living in the beautiful city of Toronto, in a suburb. They're living at Jane and Finch, a Toronto suburb full of immigrants trying to build new lives in North America. Diane, the eldest, is the light of the little family, the one Alicia longs to emulate more than anyone else. But when Diana doesn't come home one night and her body is discovered in the woods, Alicia becomes haunted. She thinks she knows who did it, but can't tell anyone about it. Unable to handle the loss of their daughter, and unaware of Alicia's secret guilt, a family unraveled. It's only through an unusual friendship with Paula, an older woman who volunteers at her school, that Alicia finds reprieve. Once an orphan in the Nova Scotia home for colored children and estranged from her own sister, Paula helps Alicia under understand that the chance for redemption and peace only comes with facing difficult truths. This is uh, Andrea Gunray's novel, The Lost Sister, that was published by Nimbus on the 4th of March in 2020. Let me continue with, uh, I think, the last novel, yeah. And this is by Sheena Kamal, also this one from Canada. It's called No Going Back, that was published on uh, 14th of April in 2020 by William Morrow, who's also the publisher of Peter Robinson in the U.S. Nora Watts has a talent to see what lies beneath strangers' surfaces and for knowing what they work hard for to keep hidden. But somehow, it's the people that are closest to her that she has problems and trouble really connecting. In the case of Bonnie, the teenage daughter Nora gave up for adoption, she has to keep trying. For Bonnie has a target on her back. And it's all because of... Two years ago, Bonnie was kidnapped by the wealthy Zhang family. Though Nora rescued her, she made a powerful enemy in Dao, a mysterious triad enforcer and former head of the Zhang's private security. Now Dao is out for revenge, and she needs to track him down in order to keep herself and Bonnie safe. On Dao's trail, Nora forms an unlikely partnership with Bernard Lamb, an eccentric playboy billionaire with his own mysterious grudge to bear, and reunites with John Brazuka, ex-cop turned private investigator and Nora's occasional ally. From Canada to Southeast Asia, they pursue Dao, uncovering a shadowy crim criminal cabal. But soon, the trail will lead full circle back to Vancouver in British Columbia, the only home Nora's ever known, and right to the heart of her brutal past. This is number 10, the 10th novel that I recommend you for Christmas, the 10th crime novel that I recommend for you to buy for your loved ones or for yourself by Sheena Kamal, and this is called No Going Back. These were 10 novels. I hope that you find one of them attractive or two of them attractive. Maybe you also have read one of them. Please leave me a comment down below. If you are a returning subscriber to my channel, I thank you so much for coming back. If you are new to the channel, I would kindly ask you to please subscribe to get notified when my next video is going to be published. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. And now wear a mask, socially distance, and read, and read, and read. Have a good time. Be safe, and bye-bye.